Hey everybody, welcome back to our Nagios XI administration series and today we're going to cover Active Directory and LDAP integration. Do you have AD? Do you have LDAP? Would you love to integrate those with Nagios XI? Good news, you can do it. Jesse is going to show you how in this video coming up. Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about how to integrate Nagios XI with Active Directory so that you can manage your users in one central place, kind of like a central authority for your users, and then import them to Nagios XI. This has several advantages, including not having to change passwords or keep track of separate passwords. It's kind of like single sign-on. You just have one password, which is your Active Directory password, and you use it to log into Nagios XI as well. So, that being said, first things first, we go to the admin section of Nagios XI, then we go to LDAP slash Active Directory integration. Once here, we have to add an authentication server, and it's worth noting that if you use SSL or use some sort of certificate with LDAP or Active Directory, feel free to add that certificate here. Now you'll see that we have several servers added already, so I'll just show you what the dialog looks like. First you choose whether or not it's Active Directory or LDAP. You choose the base DN, so if my DN was example.com, it would be example dc equals com effectively just like that, and this would be whatever your organization is, like this, for instance, mine might be nagios.com. <clears throat> and you choose the account suffix, and of course there are examples in gray here. My account suffix would be at nagios.com due to the above prefix. And then the domain controller can be either an IP or host name, and it is a comma delimited list, so you feel free to use commas in between the domain controllers if you have more than one. Then you choose a type of security, SSL, uh, TLS, those are the options. Uh, feel free to do that as well. Now, once you have this configured, and this is the test one that I've configured on an example domain controller that I own, um, then go to Manage Users. Once you're at Manage Users, click Add Users from LDAP slash AD. Now we select the domain controller, in my case it's 4.169, and we enter the credentials of a user that has admin access or at least uh, privileges on that domain controller. Now we press next. And you'll see that we get a list of objects from the domain. Now these objects of course can be organized however you want them to be organized, kind of what a domain controller does. Uh, in general you'll put users in the user uh, <laughs> in the user parent directory. So we'll click on users and then you see on the, le on the right hand side you have a list of all the users. You can select all of them, you can select none of them, you can select specific users if you want to, but these are effectively the users that we're going to import into the system. Of course, you can tunnel down into your groups even further, so for instance, only domain admins, uh, those are the only people I want imported. If you had maybe a database team, you could click database team, see the users from that team and go ahead and add them. Very uh, straightforward, uh, feel free to, very uh, straightforward. Uh, you're also capable of checking out the local machine and it gives you some DN information. I noticed that while I was on here earlier, just wanted to point that out. But otherwise, for the sake of our example, I'm just going to click on Holden Smith and Eric and press Add Selected Users. Now you'll notice that the users, uh, there's still a little bit of information to fill in. Of course, the username me is not ideal, so we might want to change this to Holden. Username Eric looks good. Then you can uh, specify what email you'd like to attach to their account. This email can be pulled in via Active Directory as well if the email field is filled out. Um, you can select more than one object to edit both of them. Their preferences and security settings if you'd like. And I'll show you what preferences look like. Uh, you'll, you'll always want to make sure to create them as a monitoring contact. And if you would like them to use the default interface, that's what I recommend doing is have them use the uh, default interface, which is what whatever interface you set up globally. Each user can have a specific date or number format according to their desires, and of course we support several languages as well, so feel free to change the languages there. In terms of security settings, you can make these users administrators at this screen if you'd like to, or you can uh, delegate their privileges a little more uh, in a little more granularity by clicking on these individual options. So, once that's all said and done, uh, this looks pretty good to me, except I haven't filled out any emails, so I'll just do holden at example.com, and let's do eric at example.com. And like I mentioned earlier, you can select all of the users and edit multiple uh, settings at the same time, so that is how you go about doing that. Now let's click the import button, it successfully adds the two users. You'll notice that we weren't prompted for a password at the previous page, and we weren't because, of course, Active Directory tying in means that 
whatever their Active Directory password is, that's what they'll use to log into the system. Now if we click on Manage Users, there's Holden, there's Eric, and we can go ahead and edit them, masquerade as them, uh, anything you can do with a normal user. You'll see some Active Directory credentials at the bottom of the Edit User dialog. Uh, that's a little bit unique to the Active Directory uh, you know, login type. Then of course you can also, uh, it's worth noting that you can also allow local login if the auth server login fails. Like if you want to give them a local password up here, then allow them to log in locally if the auth server is unavailable. Um, I don't recommend using this, especially if you have you know auth servers that are <laughs> online all the time, as they should be. Then I, I recommend just using the Active Directory server as intended. So. That's actually how I uh, recommend adding users in an enterprise environment. It makes management of users much much easier. I mean, when you disable the Active Directory password, then of course their uh, user account user account in Nagios XI is disabled as well. So it's good from a scalability standpoint as well. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hope I taught you something, and I'll see you next time.